Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. We're also on Dash Radio on their Nothing But Net channel. That's every single weeknight at 7 p.m. Check out Five Reasons YouTube an hour before every game for Before Floor. As soon as the game ends, post up 5R. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of our other streams on all of the South Florida sports. When news breaks, like Derek Jeter leaving the Marlins, we break in. Also, FiveReasonSports.com. Get the latest takeaways from Brady Hawk and others. Big NFL draft series from Hassan Patel that's going up there on the site. We do not have a paywall, unlike the newspapers in town. Also, check out our great sponsors. You know one of them. It's PrizePicks.com. That's where you go for all of your daily fantasy needs. Put down $100, $20, $50, doesn't matter. They will match it, okay? So use the code FIVE, that's F-I-V-E. Then you can play the flex play, the power play, depending on how much you want to risk. You play two, three, four, five players together. And you can play more than NBA if you're interested in any of the other sports. But, of course, we do a show on the YouTube channel where we tell you what to pick before every Heat game. So go to prizepicks.com, use the code FIVE, F-I-V-E, get your initial deposit matched. And now, tonight's episode. Yeah, uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck the said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor plan, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop with one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on Five on the Floor. Excuse the background noise. We're still at FTX Arena after the Miami Heat beat the Chicago Bulls 112 to 99. They go to 41 and 21 on the season. Tonight's floor plan. I got Brady Hawk here with me. Make sure you check his Twitter feed at Brady Hawk 305 for all the latest interviews. Brady and I were just in there. Alex Salito from home was also doing it on his account. Tropical blanket. And we're going to go through our five takeaways. We're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to switch off tonight. I will go first. And here's the primary takeaway. I don't want to lose the forest and the trees here. And we can talk about the minutia of this game, and we're going to do that. And all the things that are going right for the Miami Heat, they're first in the East and all of that. But I think you need to put this in a grander context. Pat Riley got here in 1995, 27 seasons ago. They've had five losing seasons. That is official after tonight, after the Heat win their 41st game. This is more wins than they had last year. Now, it was a a shortened season, but more wins already than the 40 they had last year. Just five losing seasons. I put this on Twitter. Since Pat Riley left the New York Knicks, they've had 18 losing seasons. And they didn't even have any for the first five. They have had 18 losing seasons in the 22 since. And the Heat, the model of consistency, as we see what's happened with the Dolphins, with the Marlins, with the Panthers, with the Hurricanes, and all these teams over the years, they just keep winning. Okay? And tonight was another good example of how they do that. And now they are eight and two, eight and two against the four teams that I think most in the national media would put ahead of them in the Eastern conference. Maybe not so much the one tonight, but they got a lot of buzz as well, but against the bulls, the bucks, the Sixers and the nets eight and two on the season. And I asked Tyler hero about it afterwards. And he said, they can say what they want to say, but obviously Miami has made an impression here. If not, around the country. So just a remarkable accomplishment. The arena had a great atmosphere tonight. It had a playoff atmosphere and Miami now has a tie break over Chicago. Chicago can't get it back. There's only one game left. They're three and zero against the bulls. That may matter. They have the tiebreaker currently against the bucks. They have the lead in the season series against the nets and they still get a chance to play the Sixers here to maybe get a tiebreaker against them also. And now we're going to go to the basketball Brady. Give me the one thing that jumped out the most tonight. Yeah, I'm going to focus on the Bulls side of things. You, I know the Knicks were just catching strays on the night that he played the Bulls, but I'm here for it. Either way, uh, it's the defense and it's the matchup with the Bulls overall. Like what we just saw, I've been saying for a while that the inside the arc stuff, teams that play inside the arc, Philly's one of them, but obviously James Harden adding adds a different element. But Chicago, we saw DeMar DeRozan is an inside the arc player. We see him getting to the mid-range. He's an MVP candidate. They're going to spam Vucevic pick and rolls with, with DeRozan. And we saw what they did. They're going to put PJ and Bam in that pick and roll. They're going to switch Bam onto DeMar. He's got that matchup. 
They're going to put PJ on Vucevic. He handled him. He denied. And the biggest part of that is that Jimmy's on the weak side. And it was just what I just asked Spo about. Uh, and he kind of compared it to Wade, but he said Jimmy has his own set of rules. And it's basically true because nobody can do what Jimmy does on that end, on that weak side. We've seen Bam do it and get the blocks and everything. But just when you put Jimmy as that roller, uh, or roamer, I mean, that's kind of when he's at his best. That's when this defense is at its best. Uh, and I think this just shows not only the matchup with potentially uh, this Bulls team, but a lot of these type of teams, the things they can do uh, just defensively, the different coverages. DeMar DeRozan, uh, he had the 30-point in a row streak. Not only that, but they didn't even get him 20. They held him under 20, which is just – it's just unreal in that in that way. Uh, obviously, they don't have Lonzo Ball and Alex Cruz, so it should be said. But obviously, no Kyle Lowry. Everybody was worried about – would they have enough offensively? Uh, and that leads into some of the other takeaways because they obviously did. And that's the thing. If this team focuses on one guy, that guy doesn't score. And, and, and their ability to switch, um, but also to play straight up. I mean, that first quarter, I thought, was a clinic defensively. They just gave them nothing. I mean, there was nowhere to go. And this team is so fine-tuned defensively when they are engaged in it emotionally, which they were from the very start tonight. And we remind you... Victor Oladipo is roughly a week away. We're expecting a return on March 7th against Houston. That's the target right now. That is a week away. And they're adding him to this. All right. I want to get to the next thing tonight. And there were a lot of guys that played well and and made significant contributions, but the guy who played well, who people had the most concerns about coming into the season was Gabe Vincent. And you look at the stat line tonight, 33 minutes in place of Kyle Lowry, who's dealing with personal issues again. 20 points, a couple of rebounds, three assists, no turnovers. Your starting point guard had no turnovers in 33 minutes, four of eight from three. His assist to turnover ratio is now creeping up to about two and a half to one. He's shooting 38% from three. He's giving you Kyle Lowry like performances when Kyle Lowry's not in. And it's also with this, the subtle things, it's his ability to know when to go and when not to go. It's the reads he's making in the paint. It's the confidence. Okay. That he's playing with right now. And they really have created a Fred Van Vliet type character here who can replace Kyle Lowry, but play with Kyle Lowry. I don't know if he has all-star potential, like we saw Van Vliet develop into, but he's a similar type player. And again, he's not coming out of the playoff rotation. I I think you and I have addressed this and who comes out when Oladipo comes back. It's not going to be him. And and it it gets a little harder when you get past that, because you look tonight, Caleb Martin had 25 minutes, a vicious dunk, but was guarding DeRozan all over the floor. You had Struess, who has struggled at times of late, but seemed to find some confidence late in the game that may carry over. He ended up making three threes. We both think Struess is probably the guy who gets squeezed but we think somebody else may get squeezed when Oladipo comes back. It's going to be an almost impossible decision if he wants to go to nine, if Spolster wants to go to nine. And, and I, I just don't see how it can be Gabe with the way that he's played. I mean, the Heat have had some good backup point guards over the years. I pulled some of this tonight, whether it was a Norris Cole or an Anthony Carter or Ray for Alston or a Terry Porter or an Eric Murdoch for one year a piece. They are getting pretty close to elite backup point guard play. Okay. When a guy comes in, he's a plus 18 tonight. He scores 20 against the number two seed in the East to tie Tyler hero. I, I I just, you look at the growth from the start of the season. There are very few bad games for him at this point. There are very few bad possessions for him at this point. Um, And here's the thing. They have him on a minimum contract next year. Yeah. And it's funny. You talk about top tier backup point guards. Before the season, the weakness on this team that everybody talked about was backup point guard. Everybody's talking about at the deadline. Can they get a backup point guard? How can they fill that hole? They filled that hole themselves because you were talking about it, the different ways he was able to produce. There was a sequence in this game where he had the the pump fake step through on DeRozan. He came down the other end. Uh, He jammed up DeRozan when he tried to drive uh, on Jimmy or Tucker there, got the steal. They ran in transition. He found that corner. He hit a corner three. Like Those sequences uh, speak volume, and that leads into my fourth takeaway, which is Tyler Hero. We're looking at Gabe Vincent have these spark moments, and that's the moments that Tyler Hero's had in the past. It's the moments he still has because he's an ignitable player, much like him. But looking at a night where he almost passes the torch to a guy in Gabe Vincent and says, you be the ignitable guy, I'll be the steady hand. And it felt like all night, uh, you just mentioned they both had 20 points. 
Tyler Hero had a quiet 20 points in many ways. Like Gabe Vincent's was loud. Tyler Hero's was, was uh, obviously quiet. And I feel like that's important for him. Like when we're talking about the production, I asked him just in the interview room, if uh, getting to the free throw line, getting embracing contact, doing all that type of stuff, how that's kind of clicked now. And I think that's the biggest thing because I'm watching him on the floor and I'm like, this lineup could be interesting. He's sitting there next to Gabe, Caleb, Max, and Deadman. Uh, just kind of a full out bench lineup. Can he take advantage here? And he did. He just kept spamming pick and rolls. He got to the basket. He got to the line. Uh, he's just really embracing contact, like I said. And I think that's the biggest thing with his attacking. Like we know he has the mid range. We know he has these wild, fancy scoops, the pull up three. But when he can get to that level where he's taking contact and finishing at the rim strong, that's the type of steady hand that you need on this team. Like when we're talking about that next level shift. That's probably the biggest development on this team. Like they have guys in Caleb that's had moments. Max has had moments. Gabe has had moments. When you have Tyler be able to step up in the way, I think that's one of the biggest things you have for this team. And I think the other thing with this team, and we'll get to some more of this uh, after the break, is that we've gotten to this point of the podcast. We really haven't talked about Jimmy Butler or Bam Adebayo's offense because they didn't need it tonight. Uh, and, and I think that speaks to the idea that this team – just has more answers than a lot of these other teams do. And I think we're going to see that as we go forward. And I, I do look, I want to acknowledge Chicago did, doesn't have Caruso. They don't have ball. They will both be prominent parts of the playoff rotation that will make them better defensively on the perimeter, but the heat are adding Oladipo. They may be adding Morris and, and they might be adding Kyle Lowry back who we haven't discussed at all here either. All right, before we, we come back, though, we do want to tell you about another great sponsor, the Five Reasons Sports Network, and he actually sponsors Brady Hawk's appearances here on Five on the Floor. That's our friend Eric Rubenstein. You can find him at on Instagram at Ask About Me, I Got You. And I I'm look, even if you don't need a personal injury attorney, <laughs> seriously, even if you don't, I'm promising you this is the most entertaining sponsor Instagram account that you will ever find. Just check it out. Ask about me. I got you. It gives off a little bit of Eric's personality. He's going to work for you. Okay. He's got a law degree here from St. Thomas. He graduated magna cum laude. He's from this area. Uh, he grew up in a personal injury law family, and he can help you whether you've got a car accident, slip and fall, medical malpractice. He will help you get your money. He's also a huge heat fan, as you will see there on the account. So check him out at ask about me. I got you or the phone number 954-829-ERIC. That's 954 954- 829 ER I see. I've actually known Eric for 17 years. We ran each, into each other at a Pramani brothers on Fort Lauderdale beach. That is how Miami he is uh, that he, well, that's actually Fort Lauderdale, but anyway, we, we count it all the same. Check out Eric at 954-829 ER I C. All right, let's uh, let's get to number five. I will let you lead with it. I have something I want to close. With. I think where I'm saying, I know I touched on the defensive stuff, but when watching these games, I was at the Spurs game the other night, watching this game tonight. Bam Adebayo is Defensive Player of the Year. And if he's not the Defensive Player of the Year, he's the best defender in this league, which I think is a better label than probably Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, because the impact he has, like there's one thing to say, and you watch a highlight tape of him just locking up your favorite offensive player like Luca or all these other guys. But it's another thing just to watch him be put in so many different spots and an offense try to manipulate him and put him in so many different spots to get him away from the play. And he just finds his way back in. We've seen that specifically in that Charlotte game, a little bit in that San Antonio game where they said, we're not going to take the, his man and come for him to set the screen. Like we're going to leave him on that dunker spot. But what happens is they go through a pick and roll. They go through their actions. They're getting to the rim and Oh, there's Bam on a bio uh, getting three, two, four blocks in a game, which by the way, speaking of defensive player of the year helps his case because I know a lot of people voting, just look at the blocks and steals, uh, which is not a good thing, but, seeing that raise up in his way could help, but just watching him lock up switching onto Levine and DeRozan play after play. I'd have to look at the number to see how many times he switched onto those guys, because it felt like it was almost every possession. One thing is to stop them contest it because it happened a ton of times, but it's another thing forcing them to pass, getting the ball out of their best player on that team uh, just speaks volume that I'm watching these games and he's just the most impactful player uh, on the defensive end in this league right now. Yeah, Gabe Vincent called him defensive player of the year. I think all these all the Heat players would agree. I, I don't think he gets it because I think that a couple of things. One, narrative. Uh, a lot of voters are stuck in the 90s. They haven't watched the Heat. They see Rudy Gobert and they say that's defensive player of the year or Draymond Green. I will tell you this, though, as great as Draymond's been with as much time as he's missed, if he ends up ahead of Bam in defensive player of the year, that will be ridiculous. And that will likely happen, by the way. I, I, I keep saying this because I want Heat fans to temper their expectations. 
Eric Spolster is not going to win coach of the year. He's not. Okay. It's going to go to the team that no, nobody expected coach, which is Bickerstaff, or it's going to go to Monty Williams. If he holds together the Suns during this period and they end up with a number one seed in the West, or it may even go to Billy Donovan. Although I do think that Chicago is going to slip down the standings enough that that's probably not going to happen. It, it is not going to be Eric Spolstra and defensive player of the year is not going to be Bam out of bio. The one award that they can win. And I think they probably will win is Tyler hero will likely win six man of the year. I think when you look at the way he's righted himself over the past few games from an efficiency standpoint, coming off the bench, the numbers are going to be there and it's going to be hard to argue against the numbers. And he does have enough of a profile that I think that will help. I know there's a bit of a buzz for Kevin love and some others, but I think it's going to be Tyler. Okay. But the other two awards, they're not getting them. I'm sorry. And, and it's not a deserving thing, but it's just not going to happen. I mean, we're now 62 games in the season. There are 20 games left. There's still nobody nationally talking about this team. And I'm supposed to tell you, by the way, that George Sedano is going to be on ESPN hosting a lot of their primary shows the next couple of days. You will get heat coverage for two days and then they will ignore it again and start talking about uh, Ty- Taylor H- H- Horton Tucker, whatever it is uh, out with the Lakers. All right. One more thing I want to get to before we do this segment is sponsored by friends over at city cigar lounge. You got to check them out tomorrow night. Or if you're listening to this on Tuesday tonight, they got their grand anniversary. Okay. It's right down the street from FTX arena. The heat are not playing. You can go check the place out. Okay. But they got lots of TVs. If you want to watch the NBA games, they got large cover uh, leather chairs and having a great event starting at six o'clock. Okay, more than 50 different types of premium cigars, more than 350 different types of scotches, bourbons, whiskeys and tequila. Check out City Cigar Lounge. It's in downtown town, Miami. They 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 sponsor our victory cigar segment here on the show. We also want to mention one other thing. Uh, Use our product code 5RSN. For endurance runners, go to getsalise.com. You get 10% off. And for your premium CBD, go to therapistpreferred.com. You'll get 25% off. And that's all kinds of CBD, although they're currently promoting their sports cream. You definitely should check that out if you need it for recovery. All right. The Victory Cigar tonight, to me, uh, goes to Pat Riley. And, And I'm doing this not because there aren't a lot of Heat players who deserved it tonight. I mean, look, even Duncan came off and made three threes and got everybody off his back. Max Schroes got off at the end of the game. You mentioned Tyler. Uh, Gabe was great, okay, as we talked about. Jimmy was really good defensively, even though he didn't make – he's sort of out of it offensively tonight. Uh, And Bam with the block, and he had some sequences in the game where he took over, and he was was a team best plus 20. But I'm giving it to Pat because I I just don't think we can take this for granted. They showed him uh, tonight when they were, you know – honoring Spolstra and Riley for being two of the top 15 coaches, according to the NBA and NBA history. And it's funny because Eric was during his timeout and he, he, he might've smiled a little, but he stayed with it. Pat soaked it up. Pat soaked it up. I mean, he, he raised his hand, he took in the applause. And, and I just think when you look at what he's given to this market and look, I haven't agreed with everything he's done. I've had my battles with him and all the rest of it, but the consistency, um, getting off the mat when things don't go right. I mean, LeBron left in 14. This franchise was supposed to be sunk for a while. Uh, Bosch gets sick and goes out. Dwayne leaves. Dwayne comes back. Your best player is Josh Richardson. You give a max contract to Hassan Whiteside. And here you are. You've been to your finals two years ago. You've now validated the finals appearance to a large degree. You know, so you're not, you weren't bubble flukes. Maybe the Lakers were bubble flukes. You're not a dangerous loomer right now. You're first in the Eastern Conference with 20 games left in the season in a very competitive conference, pacing for about 54 wins right now. Pat deserves his flowers, and and I'm, I'm glad to see he's actually taking them, that he's enjoying it. He seems more sentimental these days. I think he really likes this team. This This is his kind of team, but it's been molded perfectly by his hand-picked coach. He went into the video room in 2008 and picked a guy that nobody around the country had heard of. You take a look at what other franchises in this market have done trying to find the next big thing. And Pat found it in the video room or him in the video room. I I think Pat gets the victory cigar. All right. We'll be back with plenty of more stuff this week. Big games coming up this week. They got the nets. They got the Sixers. uh, They got the Suns coming up. They got the bucks. Okay. So this is going to continue, but right now the heat, they can't be losers this season, 41 and 21. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.